Hello and welcome back to Podcast School. This is another video podcast in the series of electronic systems and today we're going to take a look at the thyristor. I've said here that the thyristor is a solid state semiconductor device. Okay, we've talked about semiconductors before. They act as a switch conducting when the gate and we'll see what the gate is in a second, receives a current pulse and continue to conduct for as long as they are forward biased. Okay, so uh, what does that mean? Well, first of all, there's the symbol and you'll note that it's a bit like a diode, only it's got this extra leg here. Okay, that leg, in fact, is the gate, which we talked about in, up in the definition. It also has an anode, which is the positive terminal of the device and a cathode which is the negative and you can see this is what it looks like over here on the right hand side. I've said in the definition that it acts as a switch and it conducts when the gate receives a current pulse. In other words it's like a diode and a normal diode if you were to connect it in a circuit would conduct as long as it was forward biased. What do I mean by forward biased? I mean that the the anode is at a greater voltage than the cathode. In other word, words, it's, it's more positive. All right? If I turned it around in the circuit like I would have, like if I did it with a diode, it wouldn't conduct. The anode needs to be more, more positive. So as long as it's forward biased, it will conduct when the gate receives a current pulse. Okay? You can think of it a bit, well, not really, but a bit like a, a transistor except that whenever the uh, base of the transistor uh, stops having a voltage of greater than the threshold voltage of 0.6 volts, it doesn't conduct any longer. But this thing does. Okay, so all it needs is one pulse on the gate and it will conduct as long as it's forward biased. So here we have it in a circuit. Have a look. You should be able to explain this um, if you understand the, the, uh, the, thy the thyristor. Okay, so what's happening here? We've got a battery, a switch, a resistor connected to the gate of the thyristor, a buzzer up above in the anode, above the anode, and another switch, switch two. Okay, let's ignore switch two for a second. You can see that in this configuration, if we don't have a switch or R1, the buzzer will not buzz because um, the, the, there's, there's no gate voltage, or there's no gate current pulse. If this were a diode, it would buzz as, as soon as uh, the battery were connected. But with the thyristor, we need to, to momentarily close switch 1. When we close switch 1, the, the gate will receive a current pulse, and since it's revert forward biased, the buzzer will begin to buzz. Okay, very, very simple. Switch 2, in fact, is just what we use to, to reset the thyristor. So by shorting the anode and the cathode together, that will stop the, uh, the thyristor. And indeed, it will need to have another gate current pulse in order for the thyristor to begin conducting again. This type of thing would be very useful in a steady hand game where you wanted to um, keep the buzzer buzzing after an, uh, even an, a, little, a little momentary um, touch of the wand to the, to the maze uh, were, were made. So, in other words, it wouldn't just buzz for the, for the sec brief second that, uh, that they were in contact. So, you, if you were doing that type of thing, a thyristor is what you would use. Okay, a very short podcast today, um, but nevertheless, we're only at four minutes. Um, I hope you are still uh, kept subscribing. If you are watching this online, remember the orange button on the left-hand side. Press that. If you already have iTunes installed, all these podcasts will be available to you through iTunes. That's it for now. Don't forget, as always, email me if you have any questions. Info at podcastschool.net. That's it for now. Bye-bye.